So I appreciate you stopping by this morning. No, thanks How's for it having going? Me. Pretty good. Pretty good. Staying busy. Good. Where are you at? Uh, I'm in Boston. And then uh, tomorrow I'm going down to New Jersey. And then uh, the next week I'll be in Texas for um, a radio tour and a couple shows. Nice, nice. I uh, just happened to be stopping in Boston. My daughter lives there. She's in Waltham. Oh, we just played there um, last Saturday. Nice. What, what kind of venue was that? Tempo. It's it's like a, a really nice restaurant, but they have another part in the back where it's a bar and it's a big space and it's a really nice stage and a really nice room. It's a good time. Nice. So for those who don't know about you, what type of music uh, do you play? Uh, I play country music. Um, and I, I would call it like Heartland country music. How does that uh, go down in a place like Boston? I mean, I'm sure it's very well appreciated, obviously. Well, you know, it, it's funny. Um, people like country music all over and there are, you know, rural areas all over the country. So, you know, I don't believe that country music belongs to the South. It just has been marketed that way. Uh, my mom, my my dad from Oklahoma, he met my mom touring up in Massachusetts, um, you know, because he came up here because there was a, a demand for it, a demand for, for country music. I mean, Kenny Chesney sells out stadiums up here. So does, I mean, a lot of other artists do. It, so the idea that Southern music belongs to the South is, you know, it's just a marketing idea. Even, I'm not sure if you had a chance to watch Ken Burns' documentary on country music, but even the first country artists were, you know, um, car caricatures, you know, hillbilly caricatures. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the hit r songs were written by guys from New York City. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. And one would never know that without, uh, you know, watching yeah. a doc like that. Yeah. Ken Burns. Well, I mean, you know, little things like um, the banjo, right? You, you think, I know it was that, that Burt Reynolds movie, uh, Deliverance, you know, dinner, 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 dinner. you think. Oh, yeah. You think it's coming from the banjo is from Africa. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, so few uh, that. I love the first episode. It was talking about the rub, the rub from uh, different cultures, African Americans and, you, you know, working class people in, a lot in mostly in the South. Um, they're playing music together. Yeah. So the music came from. Fascinating. Anyway. Yeah. It's okay, like, yeah. Going, huh? just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it really is those really perceptions that are built over time and uh yeah, yeah. yeah it's easy to to market to, to label people and just you know box them in the corner and i'm sure any you know and our person will tell you it's like you got to easily label so that's how you how you sell the records yeah it's it is what it is yeah it really is so the latest is you know very uh very nice country tune hangover uh yes <laughs> what are what are that single's oh, origins there? Well, I, I write with uh, a few different people that I really enjoy writing with. And whenever I write with them, I always ask, you know, what else do you have? Because I'm always looking for a good song. Um, you know, I'm a I'm an OK writer. Um, I'm pretty proud of a lot of songs I've written, but I am not afraid to re record other people's songs. And Hangover came from uh, this guy, Willie Morrison, who I've I've been writing with. And uh, it didn't it didn't appeal to me right away because it was so I don't know the the demo that I heard was very I don't know I, I don't know the adjective but it didn't appeal to me but my manager was like well listen to it again because I've been listening to it and it's starting to really get in there and I'm like okay so I was like oh yeah all right all right I could, oh, duh yeah of course but it's uh, so Willie Morrison and a couple of the gentlemen wrote that particular song. And we, we've been holding on to it for a while. I recorded it last last May 2021. And uh, we have a bunch of songs from that Nashville session with Bill McDermott. And there's some some great songs in there. And Hangover is just a, a great, fun party song. You know, it's, yeah. it, it's what it is. <laughs> we all need that during something like the pandemic. It just has some really fun lyrics. It really kind of stood out to me. We ain't stopping until the morning light. Yeah. <laughs> really, I just fun lyrics. It reminds me, you know, you know who was really kind of tongue in cheek with uh, was uh, Toby Keith. And I, I love that song, Let's Talk About Me. It's just like that, that totally, that's like totally encapsulates, <laughs> encapsulates uh, the, the internet age. 
For sure. And the, the fact that a lot of us were home, um, you know, it's like, well, we can't go out to bars right now. So let's just stay home. That's what you know, basically the song's about staying home and drinking with the person that you, you care about or enjoy being around and uh, working on a hangover midweek. <laughs> mid-week. <laughs> it's so true. So true. Yeah, yeah it really helps. It, it really does in, the, in this time, uh, hangover. So we can get that anywhere on any of the uh, digital platforms. Yeah, any of the digital platforms or, or my website, HoustonBernard.com, if you feel like downloading it and, you know, supporting a independent artist. <laughs> yeah and there's so many that's why i like doing this podcast this, there's so much talent out there and especially during the pandemic when you couldn't perform you couldn't get out there it's really nice to have a, like this venue at least saying hey look look what's here this is something new don't keep listening to the legacy or the classic artists there's there's just so much out there there's a lot of great stuff happening the more and more i mean it's it's a little more challenging for for artists to try to make a living doing it uh, but it also pushes you to to be a better version of yourself and try to improve and and you know not not to competition is is good in the sense that it helps you uh, grow and be you know a better version of yourself but it's also there's a lot of camaraderie the more people that are doing it and they understand and people are always reaching out to me and asking me you know advice other artists that are coming up and you know I just tell them you know, what I can tell them. And uh, mainly it's like, what do you have any advice for me? I'm like, well, do it because you love it, not because you're trying to get famous. Because that's, that is just like, it's like winning the lottery twice. It's not, yeah. it's not, it's not an easy thing to do, especially, um, you know, the, the way the industry is, is built. It's, yeah. it's very difficult. There's very few people that make a good, good living playing original music. Yeah, that it's really tough. I mean, it's easier to just simply do the covers. That's where you're making the, the bread and the butter there. But uh, long term wise, you have to establish that identity and yeah, you're writing right. your original material is that's the way to go. Yeah. And luckily, um, I, you know, I, I'm able to do, you know, uh, a lot of original music with my covers uh, when I do like a full club night, the club nights, you know, or even private parties, sometimes people are like, well, play a few of your own songs. I like these songs. You know, they check me out and they see the, some of my music. So um, because I put that effort and that time and so many years into trying to improve my craft and, and what I'm doing, I'm able to, to do more originals with, with those, those nights that you're supposed to only be doing covers. Yeah. But That's festivals, great. Yeah. yeah festival. I've been, I've been pretty lucky and working hard too, but uh, festivals and stuff like that. I do a lot of, uh, that's, it's like 90% originals because, you know, I'm, if you want to hear covers, you know, that, that's not me. It just covers, you know, but a club night. Yeah. You got to keep people interested, play what they know. You know, I have a couple of venues, um, like when I do fly out dates, there's a couple of venues out in California. They're just like, okay, only two originals. Cause that's not what we do here. And I'm like, well, yeah. You're paying pretty good. It's not like a, it's not like, you know, your, your low paying cheap club um, pay. So I'm like, well, if you're going to pay that kind of money, well, then I'm, I'm going to cater my show to exactly what you're looking for. And yeah. then I'll throw a couple originals. Here's my new single. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you need to go off to a restroom or whatever, you know, it's a, you know, you can do that. I'm going to do this anyway. So, you know, you might like it. You never know. You might like, well, you know, it's, and it's not just about the music. Uh, what I've been, you know, I've worked really hard to try to sound good on stage. And uh, it's, it's more than that. They need more than that. The competition is, is too fierce. It's like, well, why am I going to book you? You know, you, you're playing so many originals at this club and uh, you need more of a show. You, you need to engage people, you know? Yeah. It's yeah. the interaction. So I've been really trying to work on, you know, because I want to engage people, I want to talk to people, I want to communicate and entertain them. Um, but, you know, I was watching a, a document, a very short documentary on Bon Scott from ACDC last night, and they were talking about how he, he spent many, you know, 10 years getting better at interacting with the audience and connecting. And it wasn't until he got with um, those particular musicians that it really clicked, you know. And yeah, that takes time. It really does. It's a lot of hard work. And you know. saying saying the things to the audience too, like what are you going to say to connect with them? 
you, you don't want to say something offensive. You want to sound cheesy and, and ridiculous, which I've done many, many years of. <laughs> Still do. You know, I don't think a lot of people understand you know, the thought that goes behind even you know, the between song songs banter, you know, even with the legacy artists. And you notice they always say pretty much the same thing from show to show. Oh, sure. That's right. Because it works. Yeah. Yeah. You may, sometimes you try to alter it a little bit, but you, you, I think the best thing to do is just try to be uh, your more most authentic self and as, as honest as you can. But I think a lot, like you said, a lot of people that have been doing it 20 plus years, they're saying the same stuff because they don't have to say anything different. Yeah. You know, they're, they're loved. They've already done the footwork. Yeah. You know, they've already made their, their, their peak of their career. And they can ride that out for the rest of their life. It's so true. And, you know, it just sounds so authentic every single time they do it. It's, it's like, you know, and they probably said the same things thousands of times be, before, but it's like, it's amazing how uh, they're able to make it sound fresh, like as if it's been never uttered before. That, that is a uh, testament to their ability as, as performers. I, I like how they go, Boston is my favorite city. Yeah. Milwaukee is my favorite city. Milwaukee <laughs> my favorite city. Well, I don't. Like I, I'm a little cynical when I when I go to a show and they yeah. say stuff like that. I'd rather them they say something that's a little bit more true. Like Boston, I love you know something about it. Yeah, I yeah. Chowder, I don't know. <laughs> like, yeah. Just checked out the JFK Library. Come on, it's like <laughs> gonna go a little bit local here. <laughs> exactly. Or when they wear the jerseys of a local, I'm like, oh man, you're you're pandering. You're yeah. Pandering. I, I take a little offense to that, unless it's really true. Like Kenny Chesney actually likes the Patriots, right? Like actually does, but he's not going to wear a Patriots jersey in, you know, in Dallas. <laughs> you know, don't, don't pander to me. Just be honest with me. Yeah, yeah, I think that's true. Just be your true authentic self. So you have worked in different environments, so whether it's acoustic, full band. Do you like that variety or do you have a preference among all that? Oh, I, I like the variety. Um, I was just in Nashville and I played um, some acoustic uh, writers rounds. I really enjoy that being with other writers, especially, man, I, there's some really good writers that I was able to see. I'm like, wow, especially they're, they're really young. Like a lot of them are like 18, 19 and they're doing their thing. I'm like, there's such so much raw talent and it, yeah. it's so authentic. This young girl wrote about her father who was in the military for you know, her whole life. And she wrote a song for him. And I'm like, Ooh, I said, how did you get, you know, during the, um, the writer's round, how did you get through that song singing to your dad? Cause you be, she's like, I didn't, I, I broke down. And I'm like, of course you did. Cause how can you sing a song like that and be so honest, you know, and it's people in the military, it's not just about the soldiers and that's uh, huge, but it's also about their mm -hmm. families that support them through all that while they're away for so long. So, um, that was really touching. But for me, performing, I mean, I love performing with a band because I get to do less music usually and more performing. And when yeah, it's acoustic, yeah. I you know, really have to make sure I'm really on it and, and sounding good and, and all that. It, it's, it's a lot to be able to, to mix all those things, musicianship with performance, um, you know, and like the communication between the band and all of that and just trying to to do good and not suck <laughs> it's hard big goal yeah it is, I love it really it. is. especially I love music it, it, it really I love is the challenge tough. i love the challenge of it so touring uh do you have a lot of stuff that you're like taking on the road with you a lot of gear is that really tough going from venue to venue uh regionally because I'm, I'm mostly uh in the northeast right now and i'm heading out i'm doing more in texas i'm really trying to break into this scene out in texas um so it's more acoustic out there right now but i'm, I'm charting my one of my songs is charting at 42 on the texas regional country charts which which is awesome um i would get to go visit my dad in oklahoma a little bit but yeah uh, regionally like um this weekend i'm taking you know the whole my whole system out and um I'm just be, sometimes I'll, I'll rent a van, big van, and take everybody in it, and we'll go. Uh, but this particular weekend, I'm doing a second gig that's acoustic at you know some private event. So we need to take multiple cars. We got three cars going. I'm covering gas for everybody, which is 
astronomical as you know crazy especially in the northeast gosh they're up to six bucks a gallon by now i would think uh no i think that's Calif california's up to six bucks i was just out there um or six something 650 i think it was oh my god okay but no it's uh i was just passing it's like 450 right here yeah not too bad and we're not too far behind here i'm in uh, the atlanta georgia area oh so, cool yeah it's around uh 410 a gallon so oh. yeah oh, i should drive down there fill up my tank and no that's a terrible idea <laughs> you, know, you can face yourself you know out of the southeast here <laughs> i i can't wait to get back down to uh to um like north carolina and georgia i haven't had many shows down there um so i'm hoping to to do that oh yeah it goes over really well and there's so many good venues to give a little plug to the atlanta convention and visitors bureau and all the other outlying cities around here yeah this stuff does really really well in this area we haven't found any venues that will uh that'll book me you know i'm at that level where it's like just above club level but not theater level or you know i'm up yeah. filling rooms like that but um you know i'm still going at it i've got a I got a lot of music I'm proud of more, you know, four plus albums with a bunch of singles and I've got a bunch of material ready to record. I've got a bunch of material ready to release, um, but I'm, I'm really focusing on Texas right now. And I just feel like it's a different place. You know, it's a whole different place. And so far they've been so accepting. I was doing a radio tour a couple weeks ago, going to all these little small towns, Comanche and Lampasas and, and uh, Abilene and, and I was going to the radio stations and uh, I was trying to get another gig. I only had like one acoustic gig and I was trying to get another gig. And there was this band that was in Mason, Texas, cute little town, by the way, if you ever have a chance. Huh. And uh, oh yeah, it's, it's amazing little, little town. I love it. But the radio station's great. They support live and independent music, which is unheard of most around the country. It's like Texas still has that. Um, so uh, nobody go to Texas that <laughs> plays music because I'm <laughs> there's too many. No, I'm okay. Um, but I met another band that you know I'm originally from Oklahoma. I was like, I'm, you know, they were listening to the radio station as they were leaving. I was like, hey, I'm looking for a gig. If anybody has a gig, you know. And so they invited me to play and open up for them acoustically. Um, it was like an hour and change away, but I mm. I drove out there down to Hunt, Texas, and uh, opened up for them in the venue. Uh, it's called the hunt store that was an that's my first uh, official country music show in uh texas and the the vibe is a little different i mean you know yes they love country music in the northeast but it's not the same yeah yeah as it is in texas it's not the same as it is in in nashville or, or even california it's it's very different place um and they they listen and they um appreciative uh, but the band that invited me was actually from Oklahoma. So I was very excited to meet some people from my, you know, birth state that's playing music. I probably would have known them if I had grown up in Oklahoma more. Um, so that was very exciting. And uh, so, yeah, I did the show and and uh, he, actually I'm still in touch with those guys. I, I like their music, too. And um, just they're they're they've been accepting they're like they're, they, they've been doing it for at least six years in Texas. And they said, you can make a living here playing shows just in Texas and your music would fit really well. They call my music traditional. I'm like, <laughs> traditional? It feels modern to me, but that's maybe because I'm old. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah. no, seriously, they, they call it like a, a they, like a 90s style because I consider it Heartland music and the, the modern music, country music that's coming out right now is, is very processed. It's very pop. Um, not to say there's anything wrong with that. What I'm saying is that that's not really what I do. So uh, my music goes over well uh, so far there. And I think uh, I'm going to keep pushing. Seems like a lot of that is coming out of Nashville these days. That's, and it does sound very similar between the and tons yeah. of artists over there. It, it is what it is. You know, it's like every generation needs to have a voice and uh, they have multiple artists. Because like my style of music, I feel sounds kind of like Luke Combs. It's just very rock, you know, you know, very um, yeah. honest, a lot of, uh, but then you've got like Morgan Wallen, who's who's also very um, popular right now, uh, and he's he's got a mix. Of, you know, it's a little close, closer to Florida Georgia line with some, you know, he's he's mix, mixing some hip hop in there and some um, you know production, modern production tricks and polish. Let's call it. Yeah. 
it's trendy. It seems like it's it's pretty big yeah. at the moment. It's working for him. <laughs> he's, yeah. He's huge. He's the biggest thing right now. It's yeah, you really him. can't argue with that kind of success. It's uh no. And and you know, I I feel like as long as you're being your authentic self and this is who you are and this is what you want, then who cares, you know, whether people like it or if it's polished or if it's overproduced, who cares? I yeah. I, I support any artist doing their thing. Because that's all I'm trying to do. My thing. Totally. And you started recording 2013 and so you have how many albums and just tons of EP singles and all this time you've been recording? Yeah. So, you know, I've recorded many other styles of music in different bands and different projects and different albums, but for country music, um, 2012, I think recorded, but released it 2013. That was like a kind of a classic style EP and then did a full album in 2015, uh, a little bit more modern a little bit prog rock in there um <laughs> it's knocking boots is that the, the knocking right? boots is yeah that's the the longer album that particular song um has a bit of a prog rock feel even though it's very blues based uh you know half time and it's not something you'd hear on the radio but that song is uh, people love that song um I'll probably do that song next time I go out to San Diego which is a very the venue we play out there that uh, they're very pop driven as soon as the set's done, they go right into a dance club. Like, so they want the energy, 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 and Knockin' Boots kind of has that energy. If I'm gonna play two original songs out there, uh, that I think is gonna be one of them. Awesome. Uh, and then after that was, uh, what did I name that? Lucky Man, obviously. Lucky Man as another EP, very proud of that work. And then uh, we got some label interests. I got some label interests and I, I, I started listening to my manager more. You know, it's very difficult to do for someone with my personality, but um, when I'm in the studio, I trust my producer. I listen uh, when I have a manager or somebody that I can trust um, and who support me all through the pandemic without getting paid. Yeah. Um, then I know for sure that this is the right person for me. So I started listening to her. We got some label interests that said, well, we like him. We like his sound, blah, blah, blah. But he doesn't sound very Nashville. So she uh, introduced me to Bill McDermott in Nashville and said, well, let's, let's record some stuff. So that's when I went down and recorded um, the first time, I think it was December uh, 2019, right before COVID. And then I went again, um, you know, recently. And so I put some of those songs into American, I'm sorry, Freedom, which is kind of the fourth album EP. And then I just have singles, lots of singles. And um, I'm really happy working with Bill McDermott, you know, and the studio musicians are, are great. It's it's quick. Yeah, it's still true to the song. It's cheaper. Um, the quality is much higher. Uh, even though I have a great band, it's it's a different thing. And it does sound Nashville, but it also sounds me. So I'm pretty proud of, of the stuff we're doing. I'm actually, I was just gathering a bunch of songs, trying to figure out what I'm going to record next. Uh, Cause I'll probably go back in December. Oh, that's awesome. And it's great to have a great producer. It's somebody who could really understand, make you feel comfortable in that space and then have your, uh, your backup, your studio people there. So yeah, if that's a win-win formula. Yeah. Well, you know, it was great. The studio musicians, like uh, they played on so many albums uh, that you've, hits that you've that you've known like tim mcgraw's keyboard player was was in there um the drummer was the drummer for alabama who's touring with them you know people like you know top of their game musicians in there just when they're not touring they're studio musicians oh that's and great awesome that really is. yeah yeah <laughs> So you shared the bill with uh, Luke Bryan and people like that. It sounds like you have a nice roster of people who you've uh, shared the bill with. Yeah, we've done uh, we've uh, Luke Bryan and um, you know Eric Church, people like that. We did a lot of side stage stuff for Org, but it's you know the same bill. And then we uh, actually shared the stage, literal stage, with like Old Dominion when they were coming up uh, a couple times actually. Um, 2015, uh, Travis Tritt, Montgomery Gentry. You know, got to hang out with with all of those uh, hardworking, talented, successful musicians. And every now and then they would uh, either just be nice to hang out with and, you know, catch the vibe or they would give you advice and Old Dominion, they gave us some advice. And actually, I actually just ran into when I was in Nashville a couple of weeks ago playing uh, Whiskey Jam, yeah. I ran into uh, 
the um, the guitar player for Old Dominion. We were going to get coffee, and the, you know, all <laughs> the publishing. We were staying right in Music Rose, so and all the publishing. Everyone's kind of walking around and doing their doing their business. And I was like, "Hey, <laughs> nice." Of course, he didn't remember me, but it was nice to see him, and you know, congratulated him on his success. And he was really polite. And people like that really, uh, when they're really successful and they're they're good to their fans, and you could tell they've got this star quality about them where they can not, they can still make you feel like a human being, even though they've got a lot going on and they're really focused on their careers and stuff. They can still take the moment, you know, the minute and say, well, what are you guys doing here? You mm-hmm. know, like, you didn't have to say that, you know, yeah. really nice guy. Anyway. They're keeping it real. That's great. That really is. To, you got to. Um, so out of your entire catalog, do you have a favorite? I mean, you consider songs your babies and you have a favorite one or it's just like, no, nah, I can't really uh, can't really go there and do that. I, mean, I love them all just equally. I don't love them all equally. I have some songs that <laughs> uh, I laugh at sometimes and uh, like, oh, my God, I can't believe I wrote that. Um, and then I have songs that are just like, OK, I can see why I wrote that. Um, and then I have songs that are so true to my heart that uh, like my best song that I've ever written and my most honest song I haven't released yet. It's called In My Blood. And I've I p- performed that many times, but and it's recorded, but I'm not ready to release it yet. I don't I think I'm just waiting f- to get to a certain level, hmm. hopefully, if I keep, you know, where it's like I put that out and I go, oh, OK, now we get it. You know, because it's a very honest song. I have a song from my first album called Happy um, that is very simple and very honest, um, but I love it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, what else? What else? I mean, uh, Knock and Boots is a fun song to perform. I like to I like to move on stage a little bit. Um, but the, 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 the songs that I've been recording, the the past couple of years and, and, and working with, you know, American dream, freedom, people, we are, those feel very true to my upbringing and, um, you know, just trying to be a hardworking person doing, you know, the best you can. And, you know, I believe in, uh, I do believe in, in freedom. You know, I very, I support the Ukrainian people and that idea. And, uh, I, I support democracy for, for that matter. Um, and democracy comes with a lot of checks and balances, you know, and I think if people alienate themselves, I'm all left, I'm all right, and don't listen to each other. Yeah. That's how we dissolve as a, as a country, or as anything, you have to listen, we don't have to agree, but we have to listen, you gotta stop arguing, it's, it's, it's such nonsense, it makes me nauseous. Uh, and, and be kind, that's what I believe in. And so a lot of the music that I've been writing and stuff is about treating people as humans, no matter the situation yeah. and it's hard it's really hard someone punches you in the face you want to punch them back you know what i mean right. but that's not always the answer why, yeah you know, why they in the face? because they misunderstood me and that's what's happening when we don't listen to each other everybody's in their own echo chambers like all my friends think this all my friends think this well won't we meet here in the middle and talk about it without yeah. yelling without being an ass you know, anyway. so true. It's so true. It's gotten really bad the last couple of years too. It's just for uh, sure. I mean, it it has to do yeah. with you know, in my opinion, it has to do with with people that we look up to. Like we have to you know have good examples. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, <laughs> that's whole thing. But a lot of the music kind of resonates about being kind, and I think that has to do with the the, the Heartland music I grew up with, working hard, trying to do the right thing. You know, taking care of your family, your friends, and just trying to to, to bring some 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 peace and positivity to the world. And that's really uh, what I really love about the music that I'm putting out now. Good. And speaking of your, your roots and everything like that, uh, you grew up in Norman, Oklahoma. Yeah, Is I was born that... in Norman, Oklahoma. Yeah. And then my dad was a, uh, you know, a musician, a broke musician. So he had two kids and he rejoined the army and we ended up in um, Alaska. So I grew up there for a while when my parents split up. Uh, my mom took us back to Massachusetts. So, uh, and I didn't meet my dad again until I was about 19. I was in the army and I um, went down to visit in Oklahoma. I was like, oh, it's a different, this is a different thing. And the more I got to know about my father and his family, I was like, oh, I, that all, like, that feels like me. That feels like who I am. And, you know, I'm, I'm a little bummed 
that I missed out on growing up with my father for a lot of the formative years. Oh yeah, um, for sure. Not having, not having a father around mm. is can really, um, for, for, for any girl or boy or whatever, you, you, I've always feel like you need both parents or some sort of, uh, uh support. And I, I didn't necessarily have all that support growing up. So I really dug in deep, especially the last few years, um, 10 years playing country music and just try to figure out who my family is, which helps me find out who I am. And that has a lot to do with like the song in my blood that I wrote and figuring out, you know, what I believe in and, and, uh, why, and, mm. uh, where, where these feelings and these traits came from. And my dad had, uh, you know, 11 siblings in his family. They grew up on the farm in Oklahoma and, uh, a hundred percent self-sufficient for a long time. I was named after my uh, uncle that passed on the farm when he was uh, two years old. Oh, wow. Uh, Houston Bernard. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people think it's a stage name. I get it. Huh? Cause it sounds like a stage name. It does sound like that. Yeah. Ready made. <laughs> yeah. Right. And then uh, Houston is a name in our family. Uh, Houston Harrison from 1910. He was actually in Oklahoma. He got shot by a, a police officer. Uh, they had a, uh, vendetta against each other or something um so there's a that was my great grandfather and so and you know, like my great great grandfather george bridger creek newcomb he's a great um not a great he was a, he was a gunfighter uh he ran with the the dalton gang and the james gang and uh and the dueling gang and he was part of the wild bunch and yeah. he, they're the Eagles did a whole album called uh, Desperado, which was about the Wild Bunch. And track 10 is a, a song called Bitter Creek, which is yeah, named yeah, after great him. album. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I, every Eagles. God. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> every <laughs> note the Eagles did was perfect. <laughs> well, George Bitter Creek Newcomb is my great great grandfather. And that's wow. what they wrote that song about, which is pretty cool. I didn't find that out until a few years ago. That's this awesome. Canadian but... country artist told me about it. And I was yeah. like, oh my gosh, I didn't know that that album was about, you know, my, my family. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, How like, crazy is that? And it's so universal. Like, God, you would think, you know, this is the old wild, crazy West. So it was about a shootout in uh, 1895, I believe. That's uh, what Bitter Creek is all about. That, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. They shot him in his sleep. I mean, there's a bunch of different stories. But uh, in the song I wrote, it's like, um, I actually said they shot him in his sleep. They did. He was sleeping uh, in the barn and um, the, the brother of his girlfriend came out and they were trying to collect. It was a $5,000 reward, which as you can imagine, $5,000 back then is uh, was a lot of money. Insane amount, I'm sure. Wow. Yeah. Crazy, I mean, crazy. You're breaking the law. You know, I, I can't <laughs> condone all that, but it, it was over a hundred years ago. So yeah, it. time heals a lot of that. Those <laughs> <laughs> I don't know all the imagine. details. I wasn't there. <laughs> it's it's so true. So your dad and uncle were into music and yeah. they've got a little bit of a history there. Yeah, my uh, uh, Reba McIntyre recorded one of my uncle's songs, uh, Muddy Mississippi, on uh, her 11th studio album, I believe it was. And he, he uh, my uncle was, you know, my dad sings and stuff, but he was mainly the bass player and support for my, my uncle who was, you know, the A type personality was pushing everything and they toured for, for many years. And uh, even till um, my uncle's death back in 2003, uh, he was still in music and he was, he was writing a movie actually about our great grandfather and writing a soundtrack to it and, and everything. But uh, yeah, they, they, they backed up a lot of different acts. Tanya Tucker, they were one of her first backup bands. Yeah. Um, you know, Wanda, Wanda Jackson, who's what do they call her? She's the uh, the first lady of rockabilly. Yeah, like so you got some serious rockabilly influences there too. Yeah, yeah, and I also grew up like my main influence musically was Elvis, who so was very rockabilly. Oh gosh, yeah. Um, and they toured with uh, who else? They toured with um, who was on the um, same label as Elvis? Um, they toured Sleepy LaBeef. Sleepy LaBeef, like exactly. Yeah. 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 How cool is that? <laughs> it was really cool. And I saw him when I was about 13 years old at the, um, there's a venue here that I wanted to play for many years. He's like, someday you'll be up here. And I was, and I was like, you know, a few years ago, that finally came true. I would actually be able to, and I've performed on that stage three times now. Very excited about it. 
Yeah, so the the, the Rebel Brothers were pretty big back in the seventies. Um, yeah, so as a to... touring act. Yeah, and you know, things were different. The I'm not saying positive or negative, but they were different. Like the Rebel Brothers, like you know, they're from the South. Even though my my dad definitely leaned left, probably uh, during that time. Um, you know, things change as you get older too, but uh, the idea of a rebel or Southern, like it wasn't as, you know, as, as we've learned, it's, it's a, there's a whole different view of it now. So they used to dress up in rebel uniforms or something and wow. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> like, all right, <laughs> that doesn't, that wouldn't go over today. I don't think. Not at all. <laughs> not at all. No, totally would. I mean, I, I think it's I think it's good to be, uh, in my opinion, good to be conscious of how people are feeling um, and be respectful of how people are feeling. But I think there's uh, extremes in every direction that is not helpful. So I think yeah. you know, over wokeness, <laughs> over yeah. over, you know, racist or over. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. It's like, let's meet somewhere a little closer. I'm, I'm a little over here. I'm not over here. I'm over here. So and I feel like everybody's feelings and opinions are, are, are valid but let's let's try to listen to each other and maybe we'll find something out maybe we'll learn something new and i think that's what was great during uh uh the pan the the lockdown especially is where we, where we didn't have much you know to do and so a lot of us were searching and listening and getting perspective and just trying to figure out, you know, that's why a lot of people have left jobs, right? Uh, during that time, because it's like, you know what? I've been working my butt off and I don't even enjoy this. What am I doing? Let me right. rethink. Yeah, I have, I have a second to breathe. Let me rethink, what do I want in my life? Yeah. That's what, that's what happened to me too. I, I had taken over a five-star spa and uh, and because of, of COVID, I was like, you know what? I, I don't necessarily want to, to be working this hard yeah you know, doing 80 hours a week worth of worth of work uh let me get perspective and i think by listening and looking inside and listening you know listening and listening uh people can find perspective and and maybe not be so angry about stuff yeah you know, hopefully fingers crossed it, it does get better yeah absolutely you got to work it you know yeah totally totally well i really appreciate you stopping by and uh, well, thanks for having me. I hope I didn't blabber on too much. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love getting in the you know and finding out how all the sausage is being made in these uh <laughs> in these times. So that's great. I really, really appreciate it. And uh, you know, best wishes. And where can we find you online again? Uh houstonbernard.com is the best spot. I'm on all the socials. Cool. Spotify.